Now, what's also been interesting about these protests, they're not all steel workers and electricians and uh, American Federation of Government Employees and AFSCME and SEIU. There are a lot of people of faith that have been involved in this. I did a round table in a Episcopal church right off State House Square and the leaders of the church and some of the volunteers from the church were there and they know that part of my belief and, and I, don't, I don't preach or wear on my sleeve my Christianity, but they understand the Bible talks a lot about poverty and a lot about fairness and equality and, and egalitarianism, if you will. And for them to go against workers on behalf of the richest people in our country, and that's really what they're doing in the governor's office in Columbus and Madison and in Trenton and other places, runs counter at least to my faith. I'm not going to judge their faith. They, can, they worship what God they worship and they read what scripture they read. But when you look at what, what my faith means, and whether, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm a Lutheran, I'm not a Catholic, but you look at Leo XIII and, and, and what he said about what Catholicism means for workers in fairness, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, point match, whatever, point set match. I mean, that clearly spoke very definitively about this. And Mr. President, I, I've said this on the floor today, before today, but I, I wear this pen on my lapel. It's a depiction of a canary in a birdcage. A hundred years ago, the miners took a canary down in the mines. If the canary died from lack of oxygen or from toxic gas, the miner got out of the mine. He, he only had himself to depend on. He didn't have a government that cared much in those days to write safety laws, particularly child labor laws in the mines. He didn't have a union that was strong enough in those days to fight back. Too many people that are ultra conservatives, and there are many in both these bodies in the Senate and the House, want to go back to those days. They want to eliminate worker safety laws. They want to eliminate minimum wage. They're clearly going after collective bargaining. They're clearly going after so many of the things that we hold dear. And again, Mr. President, it wasn't the UAW workers, it wasn't the service employee union worker at the state capitol that, that caused this financial crisis. They've been the victims of it, just like a whole bunch of non-union workers have. But this financial crisis was caused by greed, by people overreaching, by the richest in our society grabbing and grabbing and grabbing for more wealth, and then they're going to turn this Let's change the subject, turn this against, against those workers. That's just happened um, far too many times in our country. Now, Mr. President, yesterday, uh, I'm a new member of the Senate Appropriations Committee, and I'm lucky enough to serve on Senator Leahy's um, subcommittee on foreign operations. And we brought the Secretary of State in, uh, Secretary Clinton, to talk to us about the State Department budget. And one of the things she said, and I mentioned Madison and Columbus after she said it, but one of the things she said was that you know, it's been unions in Egypt, it's been workers in Egypt and Tunisia and around the world. Um, it's been workers who so often, sometimes through their unions, if they're allowed to have unions, sometimes through a, a more informal, non, non um, just sort of an informal collection of people in what might look like a union, but not formalized, who have taken on... Um, who have fought for freedom, who have fought for equality. A lot of this prob these problems in Tunisia and Egypt were because people are hungry, not just they want freedom, they also want fairness and a chance to make a living. But one of the things Secretary Clinton talked about is, yes, this administration actually is enforcing law, labor law in Guatemala. This administration will enforce labor laws in our trade agreements, the labor component of our trade agreements around the world. Because we, as a country, we stand for a more egalitarian workforce. We stand for worker rights. We believe workers should organize and bargain collectively if they choose. We believe in a minimum wage. We believe in workers' compensation. We believe in worker safety. We believe in human rights. And all of that is about the labor movement. And, you know, you can support labor rights in Guatemala, but you better damn be sure you're supporting labor rights in Wilmington and Columbus and Cleveland and, and Detroit and Dover, Delaware and everywhere else. And that's, um, that's those were, those were, some of the words that Secretary Clinton said, I'm obviously expanding on them, but as a nation, you know, I, I, I look back in history, in some of the worst governments we've ever had, you know that one of the first things they did? They went after the trade unions. Hitler didn't want unions, Stalin didn't want unions, Mubarak didn't want independent unions. These, these autocrats in history don't want independent unions. So when I see, when I see in Egypt, or if I see in, in the old Soviet Russia, or when I see in history tells me about Germany, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not comparing what's happening to the workers in Madison or in Columbus to Hitler and Stalin, but I am saying that history teaches us that unions are a very positive 
force in society that creates a middle class and that protects our freedom. So don't tell me you're against, don't tell me you support unions internationally, but you don't support unions here. Don't tell me you support collective bargaining in Poland, but just that you oppose collective bargaining in Zanesville or Dayton, Ohio, because frankly, that's inconsistent and ultimately it's, it's, it's not taking the side of people whom we are supposed to represent.